All right, we are in the middle of a series called A Little Bit of Wisdom. We started last week um, this series from the book of Proverbs. Would you like to turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 2? And uh, we'll pick from there, uh, from where we left last week, and then we'll talk about what uh, the topic that we have for today. We're going to talk about the importance of honor, and I'll tell you why we're talking about that today. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Um, tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to honest. He is a shield to those who walk, in walk with integrity. He guards the path of, of, of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just and fair. And you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you and understanding will keep you safe. We, uh, for those of you who just joined today or just missed out last Sunday's beginning of, of the series, uh, I want to just give an introduction about why we're doing this series. A little bit of wisdom. Um, I, I think the book of Proverbs, well, well, for that matter, the entire wisdom literature has a lot to, to offer to us as to make sure our life goes easy on the earth. That there are times that we find ourselves at a place of, uh, um, uh, of um, you know, our circumstance at a, uh, where we, we, we just don't know what to do. We don't know which way to go, what is the right thing to do. And in such times, we wish we had some kind of wisdom that would help us to make right decisions. A little bit of wisdom that will help us to make good decisions, right decisions, that will help us to uh, walk in the path that God wants us to walk in any area of our lives. And we felt this literature, wisdom literature, which is Proverbs and, and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon, or, yeah, all, all these, will offer to us so much of wisdom that can make our life easier. Now, we understand it's a big literature. There's so much to talk about, so much to learn. Um, uh, another thing is this, the wise man never arranged them categorically in a, you know, in a, in a fashion that we can talk, cover one topic and then go to another topic. And even if he did, to cover all that would take eternity for us. So what we're going to do is this, that um, as we pick up the book of Proverbs, we just want to pick up some topics that we think are necessary for us to learn for every day's life. And uh, address them and offer a little bit of wisdom in that particular area of uh, our lives. This Proverbs, uh, it can be divided into two parts. Chapter 1 to chapter 9, uh, the wise man makes the case for wisdom. Why do you need wisdom? Where do you find wisdom? Who is the source of wisdom? That's what he discusses in chapter 1 to 9. From chapter 10 onwards, all the way to chapter 31, he, he then offers a lot of wisdom to us in every area of our lives. In chapter 2, the one that we picked up for today, the first four verses is what we discussed last week. The little bit of wisdom that we have learned last week was this, that um, if you understand what it means to fear God, you can live your life fearlessly. Because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you can understand what it means to fear God, then whatever is causing fear in your life, you can be, uh, you can be uh, uh, fearless of that. You can live your life fearlessly in every other area of your lives. That's what we have learned. We started by asking you to pursue wisdom. In fact, the wise man in the first four verses is almost literally begging us, hey, search for wisdom because it's a treasure. You need to find that treasure uh, so that it can help you. 
Well, in the next few verses, that is verses 7 onwards, he gives us two reasons why we must pursue wisdom. I know it's not in your notes. If you need no, if you want notes, do we have notes? Okay. So if you have, if you want notes, you can just lift up your right hand, and they'll get you uh, the notes, or even for for that matter, pen that you need. Um, but here is what he's saying. Um, the reason why we need to pursue wisdom is because number one, it is morally good. It is morally good. In verses nine, look at what he's saying. Then you will understand what is right, just. And fair. We defined wisdom as, as something that can help you to do what is just, what is right, and what is fair in the sight of God. Knowledge is information that you are acquiring. Wisdom is applying that information in your daily life in a just manner, in the right manner, and in the fair manner. The problem is we don't know what is just, what is right, and what is fair. Only God knows that. That's why the beginning of wisdom is God. That I go to God and God gives me wisdom for every day's life. He asks us now to pursue wisdom because it helps me to know what is morally good. There are times that we are struggling about is it a right thing or a wrong thing? Is it a godly thing or a thing from devil? Or a worldly thing? Is it something that, come is, that is coming from the spirit? Or is it something that is uh, my own flesh that is pulling me towards that? You know, to, to, uh, when you are there and you are like, Oh my God, I need some, somebody to tell me what is, what is right morally, what is right ethically. Wisdom offers that to us. That's why wise man is asking us, pursue wisdom because it is morally good for you. Number two, pursue wisdom because it is personally good for you. Personally, first of all, you'll get common sense. I think we all lack common sense, you know. It's a generalized statement, by the way. Um, but I think most of us struggle with the lack of common sense. That's one of the reasons why we have problems in relationships. That's one of the reasons why we have trouble at workplace. We wish that we had some kind of common sense. And God does want to give us tons of common sense. That's what he said actually in verse 7. He says, then you will find the treasure of common sense. You'll find a lot of common sense if you come to the scripture. So pursue wisdom because it's personally good. You'll get common sense. Number two, it actually protects you. He says wisdom will keep you from making blunders in your life. Wisdom will keep you safe from harming yourself or finding yourself in a harm's way. Uh, so wisdom will guard you and protect you from all this heartbreaks and pain um, that you didn't have to go through. It will give you discretion. It, sorry, it will give you discernment enough in order to be on the right side so that you, you, know, you, you are safe. It, because it is personally good, we must pursue wisdom. And now that we understand that wisdom is necessary for our lives, and I'm sure all of you agree with that, I want to talk about... Um, little bit of wisdom today, another piece of wisdom that we really need to, uh, I, I think we need to really address that, the importance of honoring. This, well, this message was supposed to be the last, uh, well, well, penultimate of this series, but I pulled it forward because the occasion called for it. Today is a Mother's Day. We remember all the mothers and and the common sense that they gave us, and the wisdom that they've invested into our lives. And I think it is necessary for us to honor our mothers. I actually think all women are mothers. Whether you have physical children or not, you are a mother. You invest into our lives. We, you make our world better. Thank God for you. I want to give my, my best wishes to you. I pray that God will give you his choices, blessings upon you. And every prayer that you offer to him, that he would answer and he would fight on behalf of you and fulfill the desires of your heart. That's our prayer for you. I pray that you, you know, that the Holy Spirit would, would give you wisdom in helping this world make better. Keep making the world better. God bless you for that. And it's time for us to learn about honor. I actually think that we have lost the culture of honor. The world at large lost the culture of honor. And I actually think our Indian culture has lost its value for honor. We used to be people 
who respected our elders. We used to be people who respected our parents. We used to be people who would honor those who teach us, our teachers. We used to be people who would honor uh, those who are our neighbors. We used to be people who used to uh, uh, um, you know, uh, honor people of authority. But somehow, I think our culture in India, well, specifically in, 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 you know, in our society, we're losing that slowly, little by little, the, cult, the, uh, the, the um, culture of honor. That we somehow lost the importance of respecting people in our lives. And for the large part of it, I think as parents we are responsible. That we have not taught our children to respect us first. And because we did not teach our children to respect us, they will not give respect to others. It would be useless to expect them to respect those who are outside of our home if you don't teach them to respect you first. So this is going to be a warning for parents and of course a warning for all the kids today. We're going to talk about that because it is important for us to understand honor is valued by God quite a bit. That God expects us to be people who honor one another, who respect uh, one another. It's interesting. I told you, right? The Proverbs is divided into two parts. One, chapter 1 to 9 and chapter 10 to chapter 31. Chapter 10 verses 1 starts up like this. Look at it. The, the, the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise child brings joy to a father. A foolish child brings grief to a mother. So basically, this is what the wise man is trying to tell us. How you treat your parents, how you respect your parents, honor your parents, will either bring joy to them or grief to them. Now, all of us are children of somebody, right? Otherwise, we won't be here. Anyway. So it's for all of us, along with all the kids who are here. Oh, my God. I broke hope and love. You got to do better sticking next to me. That's how serious I am about this topic, huh? All of us, we would be the reasons whether our parents are filled with joy or grief. He ends that, that, uh, that, that book by the time he comes to chapter 31, verses 31. Look at verses 31. What does it say? He is talking about women there on chapter 31. It's about a wise woman. But the way he ends it, honor her. I like the, the NIV version and this is what it says. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her words bring praise, her praise at the city gate. So this is another area of honor he talks about. He starts off with honoring your parents and he ends with honoring the most important relationship in your life. Learn to honor the person that is investing into your life, whether it's spouse or your mother, whoever that person is. If you don't learn to respect them, you don't get respect back. He covers this. So he uses this word honor again and again all through, this, all, all through uh, the Proverbs. I'll come to those scriptures a little later. But he continually touches upon that word honor. What does it actually mean? Honor means to add value to people. To add value to something. Or to apply worth to something. Well, the actual Hebrew word that was used in the, in the Old Testament, whenever the word honor came, is, is a word called kabod. K-A-B-O-D. It actually means, it literally means weighty, heavy. So if for us to understand, it means this, that in order to honor somebody means, if I'm honoring somebody simply means I'm adding weight to them. Irrespective of who that person is, I'm honoring, I'm, I'm, I'm giving weight to them. So basically, whenever he talks about honor, what he's asking me to do is to add value to people. Add weight to people, whether they deserve it or not, I'll come to that point. 
add weight to people. Um, um, it's very interesting that he uses the word despise for fools. Every time he talks about wise, he uses the word honor. Every time he talks about fools, he talks about despise. Fools despise this, fools despise that, fools despise that. He uses that word continuously. But what's really interesting is, it actually means dishonoring. Fools dishonor a wise advice. Fools dishonor a wise man. Whenever he used the word despise, he was trying to tell fools dishonor what is being offered to them. So when I say honor, I'm adding weight to them. When I am saying dishonor, I'm taking people lightly. That's what it means, right? What I think wise man is teaching us and what I think we need to learn is to bring honor back into our lives because God demands from us that from us. I'll talk about that. But I want to make about I want to make three important observations about honor. Not only through Proverbs, this particular topic demands for me to go all over the scriptures. So I'm going to go all over the scriptures, but I'll keep coming back to Proverbs because of course this is where we are doing our study. But I want to make three important observations about honor. Number one, honoring begins with God's claim on people. Honoring begins with God's claim on people. Let me explain that to you. Okay. It simply means this. That you, you would begin honoring people when you understand God has a claim on people. There are two things you and I need to understand, specifically as a Christian. Number one, that God loves everyone. For God so loved the world that he, began, uh, that, that he gave his only begotten son. You know, God loved everyone. God loves everyone simply means not just Christians, not just your family members, not just your friends, but everyone. That Christ died for all, not for you, not just for you, not just for me, not just for our church, but for everyone. Whether those people believe in Jesus or not, whether they accept Jesus or not, Jesus did die for them on the cross. Paid for their sins. God loves all and Christ died for all. This you and I need to understand. And what's more you and I need to understand is this, that God loves all because everyone is made in the image of God. That we forget. Everyone is made in the image of God. What I'm trying to ask you to do is, is remember is this, that the reason we forget to, the reason we don't give honor to people is because we forgot that people may, are made in the image of God. The reason why we segregate only certain group of people to give respect and honor is because we forgot the rest of them are actually in the image of God. Hey, Romans chapter 8 is it's in the context of how the love of Christ as, uh, is something that nobody can separate us from the love of Christ, from you know, from the from the hand of God. He talks on that that particular topic. Who can, if God is for us, who can be against us? Uh, if you have the love of Christ, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Right. The the whole discussion there. In that he he, he makes a very interesting statement. Chapter eight, verse thirty. This is what he says. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he glorified. In this verse, he is talking about what God is doing in human, on the, in this world, in every human being in this world. We are all sinners. We are all we have all been separated from God, right? It's right from the beginning. And everyone who does not know Christ is actually separated from God. In order to bring us into the family of God, Christ came and died on the cross for our sins. We call that salvation. When you believe in Jesus who died on the cross for your sins and accept him as your savior, you are saved. Your sins are forgiven. You are brought into the, you are reconciled with the father because you are separated from God. 
Then he goes on to explain what happens after that. That's what's happening to all of us. We call it, the, the, the theological word for it is sanctification. What's happening to all of us right now is that God is working inside us, changing us little by little, little by little. For some of us, it's a speedy process. For some of us, it's a slow process. But he's changing us little by little, little by little to become like Jesus. We call this sanctification. He's cleaning us. That's why it's sanctification. To become like Jesus. But he just not, he's not going to leave us there. What he's saying is, when Christ comes back, God has an ultimate plan. The plan is this, that he would glorify us. What does it mean by glorifying us? Glorifying us simply means this, that God is in the business of changing every human being into the likeness of Christ. Then one day, we will all be in the likeness of Christ. We won't be Christ. It does not mean we will be gods. It means that we will look like Christ. Our character, everything that we are, we would be like Christ. That's called glorification, by the way. It only happens when Christ comes back. This is the business in which God is in, in this world. In every human being, not just in you. Not just in you. Just because you are justified, you are saved simply because you have believed in Jesus Christ doesn't mean God is not at work in somebody else's life. What you and I usually do is we forget that the same God who loves you is the same God who loves the other person. Who is not a Christian. Who is your neighbor, who hates you. Who doesn't like your religion. Who is your boss. God loves that person too. And so they deserve respect because they have the image of God. Honor begins when we recognize God has a claim on people. Number two, honor. The second thing that I want you to remember is this, and I think it's very important for us to remember is this, that honoring benefits me too. It may sound business-like proposition, but it is necessary for us to understand that when you honor people, it will bring back to us. Hey, in fact, today's main thought is that when you add value to people, it brings value back to you. Ephesians chapter 6. Paul talks about the most important relationship in home. It is, it is of course, children and parents and husband and wife. And this is how he starts off. If there are children, listen to me. This is your... Obey them. Did you see any conditions there in that verse? Obey your parents. Now here is... Here, I'll give you a little relief here. As long as what your parents ask you to do is not in direct contradiction to the word of God, because God comes first, not in contradiction to the word of God, please obey them. Make sense? So children, obey your parents. And then he goes on to say something more important. Honor your father and your mother, which in fact is the first command with a benefit to it, with a promise to it. What does he say? That all may go well with you. That all may go well with you and so that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. Could it be possible that many of us are not enjoying our jobs. Many of us are not able to enjoy what we are earning because we don't know how to respect our parents. Could it be possible that we still live with dissatisfaction in everything that we do because we forgot to respect our parents? Am I making sense right now? Wouldn't it be good for us to get back to that basic principle Honor our father and mother so that we can enjoy everything that is that is being given to us. See, honoring benefits us at least in two ways. Number one, honoring brings favor to us. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, there is an interesting proposition to us. If you read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, actually, that, that whole segment, that whole 
paragraph is uh, is arranged in an order of command and promise command and promise command and promise versus one is a command versus two is a promise versus three is a command versus four is a promise it's like that so in verses 3 he he gives a command my son tie love and loyalty around your neck in verses 1 he says hide my commands in your heart it's a heart issue if you are if your heart is right you you will have a good relationship with god that's what he means in verses 1 and 2 but in verses 3 he says tie love and loyalty around your neck it has to be shown outside why did he ask us to do that he asked us to do that because there are only two things on which any relationship in this world is based on can stand upon that is love and loyalty if there is no love there won't be a loyalty you will not have loyalty without love anyway am i making sense to you any relationship in this world whether it is between friends whether it is br- brother and sister whether it is a husband and wife whether it is that is, which is the closest relationship on the earth whether it is parents and children or children and parents whether it is a uh, uh, employee and employer whether it is just colleagues any relationship is based on those two things love and loyalty if you don't love the person with whom you are dealing with you will not stay faithful to them you will never be faithful if you don't have love anyway so he's saying without those two you can't have good relationships and i want you to show them that's why he's asking us to put it like a necklace around our neck it has to be outside you can't simply say i love my wife show me you love your wife you have to show it right you have to some way you have to show it so he said this i'm not saying that bible is saying that show that you love a person through your actions and when you do that it builds a relationship what happens when that happens he says verses 4 he says then you find favor both with god and men we miss the importance of this huh? i want you to understand this we never understand the word favor properly what favor means is this that anything that you want to do you will attempt to do it will get done there are so many people in this world who would stand against us to stop us from doing things and uh, go to simply go to a government office you will just know that things don't just really happen but here is a promise from god what god is saying is this that even the most notoriously hard hearted person will show favor on you if you stay lo- if you have love and stay loyal to the person in your relationship that god would bring favor upon your life to make sure everything that you do anything that you do would happen on time even the most difficult boss who is who is who just can't doesn't like giving bonuses doesn't like giving promotions will show favor to you that's by that bible yeah i'm not talking about that it's scriptural but because we don't learn to honor people we lose all that i'll tell you what's the problem next right favor there's a second thing that that is a benefit from them that it brings return to us it brings a return to us either in the form of honor back to us respect to us or life back to us isn't that what he said uh, honor your father and your mother that all may go well with you and then he says so that you may enjoy long life on the earth something is coming back to you life is coming back to you how can you enjoy life if things don't go well with you so he's saying you will enjoy your life you know sometimes you can have a long life and a really bad life i mean you really wish every day god please take me home please so it's not enough for us to have a long life right it's more important for us to have a life that you can enjoy and here is the promise if you can honor your father and your mother you'll get that oh so many of us have really sad lives because we forgot that we are supposed to respect our parents the third thing 
and it's a very important thing that I want you to remember this. Honor is given. I'll explain that. Honor is given. Here is our problem. Um, uh, before I go there, Proverbs, throughout the Proverbs, you will, you will also see that he talks about those who usually receive honor. There are so many occasions, so many kinds of people that he talks about. These are the kind of people who usually receive honor. For example, in chapter 3, of course, we just saw that he, God honors wise people. I mean, wise people receive honor. Um, and then in chapter 4, he talks about those who are willing to receive wisdom will be honored. He says they themselves will receive honor back. Uh, in chapter 11, he discusses about a woman who is gracious. And he says a gracious woman receives honor. In um, uh, chapter 15, he talks about those who are humble. And he says those who are humble in their spirit receive honor. In chapter um, uh, 27, he talks about those servants who guard, protect their master. They receive honor. So he discusses a lot, a lot, lot of, lots of kinds of people who are usually who receive honor. Now, here is our problem. When you look at a set like that of people who receive usually the honor, we think there are certain group of people who deserve honor, and which is true, of course. And we think we will only honor people who deserve honor. That's our problem. Our problem is this, that we think that if that person gives me respect, then I will respect that. Am I right? Or if that person does something that deserves respect, then I will respect that person. Truth is far from it. Huh? Bible demands from us that we respect people just as they are. Irrespective of who they are. Irrespective of whether you like them or not. Even if you think your boss is the worst possible guy on the earth, you're supposed to respect that guy. I didn't say that. Peter said that. Let's go to Peter and see what he talks about. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake. I like that. Huh? Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men. What he's saying is this. Boss, if you have a boss, listen to that boss. For God's sake, even, for no, even if it is not for your sake, even if you don't like it, because God wants you to do that, obey the authority above you. And he goes on to explain, whether to a king or a supreme authority or to the governors who are sent by him. This is very important for us to remember. Why is he asking us, for God's sake, listen to authority? He's saying, because they are there. Because of God sent them. So you may not like your boss, but God is the guy who put him there. You may think he is not a Christian, he doesn't know what is good, what is bad, he's, he's a, he makes bad decisions. You may think that, but God put him there. So God is saying, anybody who is above you, you submit to them. It's demanded from us, it's a mandatory experience for every Christian. Submit yourself to all authority. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should then silence the ignorant talk of the world. What he means is, he's trying to tell me, honoring people is a good thing. That's what he's trying to tell me. Submitting to the authority is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's what God expects from us. So honor is given. Don't wait for somebody to give you the honor before you give honor to them. Don't wait till uh, the other person deserves to be honored. You are supposed to respect people even if they don't deserve respect. Even if you don't think they are the people, they are the kind of people that you want to respect, you are supposed to respect them. So honor is given. Don't wait till they are ready to receive it. You are supposed to give it even if they don't give it back to you. So in the context of those three important truths, I want to talk about how do we then give honor? 
how do we give honor to people there? I want to give you, I want to try and put those three steps or three principles, whatever you want to call them, in, in, in simple words, three words. Number one, prioritize them. I'll explain that to you. Before I do that, the reason we need to learn to honor is because Bible demands from us, right? Romans chapter 12, verses 10, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourself. Okay? Keep that. That's why we are doing this. That's why we're doing this topic, that we must learn to respect. There are those who generally receive respect. We talked about them. Then there are those who deserve respect. There are some people in our lives who we must, uh, we, we must show respect that they actually deserve that respect uh, from us. I'll, I'll talk about them in just a moment. And there are also those who you must respect. Let me just clarify that, okay? I know it sounds so close to each other, right? The first one is this. There will be people who will always receive respect because of what they do. Then there are always people who do things which we ignore, but they deserve respect. And I'll talk about that. And then there are those Bible directly commands you must respect them. Parents, authorities, kings, rulers, church elders. You just have to, uh, fellow believers, you must respect them. This is a demand from God. But I want to talk about those who do deserve respect. That's, that's whom I want to talk in, in prioritizing. But let me just put the right order of priority of giving honor. Okay? Number one. Begin with God. Chapter 3 verses 9 of Proverbs says this. Honor the Lord with everything that you own. In fact, chapter, nine, chapter 3 verses 9 and 10, usually we apply it as a financial principle. Which is also true anyway. But it's more than a financial principle. It's a principle for life. It's a principle of honor. It says this, that if you don't honor God with everything that you own, you don't know how to respect others. When you know that it is God who gave you everything that you own and you don't show respect by paying back what, deserves, what he deserves from you, then you don't honor God. Then you don't honor anybody. But that matter if you don't know how to honor God. So begin with God. Everything you own is from God. Including your children. They are from God. Bible says children are a reward from God. If you don't honor your ch honor, uh, uh, begin with uh, honoring God, you cannot show that in any other area of your life. So start with God. Then show it at home. That's an order of priority, by the way. Show it at home. If you don't know how to show respect to your own spouse, do you actually expect your children to respect you? Many parents struggle with teenage children who don't listen to them anymore. They don't listen to you anymore because they never saw you respecting your own spouse. When you don't show Respect to your spouse, the closest relationship possible in, on this earth, your children are never going to learn it from you. They're never going to respect you when you are fighting for the respect from them. Hey, listen, all of you, I know it's Mother's Day, so it's a good principle for me to tell whether you call it a rebuke or anything. Mothers, remember, spouse comes first. Not children, not children. Not children, spouse comes first. Of course, all the husbands, please remember this. Spouse comes first. Not your job, not your job, not your job. Spouse comes first. Bible says that. Mothers, we forget that we are supposed to prioritize spouse and give our focus to children. Husbands, we forget that we are supposed to give Priority to the spouse, not to the job. Let's get it right. Spouse comes first. If you don't respect your spouse, the children are going to, not going to learn from you. Make sense? 
Okay, so if you show spouse your respect, then you will also be able to show respect to your children. Some of you are like, I'm not married, so I don't have to worry. No, you're going to get married. So listen to this now. Hey, one day you're going to have children. Before you have children, learn to respect your spouse. The children will learn from you. Then they will respond back to you and begin to respect you. That's the order of priority. Huh? Begin with God, show them at home, and then show it to others. Some of us are experts in showing it to others and never show it at home. Forget about God. That's called hypocrisy, by the way. And Jesus hates that. So show it to others, specifically those who deserve it. For the lack of time, I, I want to give you this scripture. Proverbs chapter 26. Go back and read Proverbs chapter 26. In Proverbs chapter 26, the, the wise man points out four kinds of people who deserve our respect. Usually we don't give respect to them, but they deserve our respect. Give utmost respect to them. He's, he's trying to tell. Go back and read it. Let me just point them out to you so that when you go and study, you can, you can underline those verses, okay? Um, first one, he says, show respect to someone who is a person of learning. We'll talk about learning on the fourth week of this series. Life of learning brings fruit, by the way. So he talks about, he talks about any person who is willing to learn, respect that guy, man. He's humbling himself. He's somebody who's willing to learn from anybody. That kind of a person deserves our respect. Always show respect to somebody who's a, who's a learner. Number two, always show respect to those who work hard. Hey, all the children, remember this. Those who are living off your parents, by the way. Everything that you eat comes from a hard work from your parents. Learn to respect what you eat. Everything that you wear comes from the hard work that your parents put in. Learn to respect what you are given. When you don't learn to respect what you're wearing and what you're eating, whatever you have, you have it because of a parent who is working 24 by 7 to make sure that you get some food, that you get some good education, a better facility than yourself, than themselves, you better learn to respect them. That's why honor your father and mother. You know? He started off with that. So here is, here is, here is a third kind of, third, a second kind of person. Respect a person who works hard. Because they're working hard. Not hardly working, but hard, hard working hard. And there's a third kind of person you need to respect, and they deserve our respect. Those who make peace with others. Those who avoid gossip and make peace with us. You know, the problem with the local church, global church, is that we have lack of people who make peace. You see, we, we have more people who talk behind us, who talk about us, than to us. That's our problem. I'm hoping that none of you are like that. I'm, hope, I, I'm hoping that you get this point that God is asking us to be a person who, make, who is a peacekeeper rather than a gossiper. That I'd rather walk up to you and help you, um, you know, make peace with you by talking to you straight forward. And do that. Respect them. He says, if they come, make peace with you. Respect them. What they say, you may not like it. But respect them. At least they're saying that directly to you. Make sense? Okay, he's, he talks about them. Number four, the fourth kind of people he says is those who can be trusted with your heart. That means he's saying the most, he's like a confidant. Huh? You can offer any kind of secret to them and they'll, it's like they'll just soak it up. They won't even let it out. These are the kind of people that you would leave your children with and go to Malaysia for a holiday. They can be trusted with your children means they can be trusted with anything. Respect them. So the order, prioritize them properly. Number two, praise them. This is a principle I've learned from Paul. I'll come to that. I'll explain that. Praise them. 
for the lack of a better word i'm using that word praise them it simply means this because our tongue can be dangerously used to destroy people because our words can be cause of disruption in relationships let's learn to use our tongue constructively how do you do that by starting to find anything positive in people paul taught me this secret in of course james talks about how tongue can destroy people right with the same tongue you praise god worthy is worthy is the lord holy holy is the lord at the same time with the same tongue you talk something really bad about about a fellow believer how can it be possible he says but paul then gives us a constructive way of using it in first philippians philippians uh, chapter 1 verses 3 he is writing to the church in philippi and he says this every time i think of you i praise god for you every time i think of you i thank god for you truth is paul does not have a reason to thank god for for these philippians from the time he walked into that city everything that he has every day has been a dangerous day for him he's been beaten black and blue almost died in that city everything that he did he he was rejected by people anything that he said he encountered people who count you know count or counter argued with him he had a tough time in that particular city he stayed there for a long time building a church uh um, leading people to Christ of course he had a good fruitful ministry but at the same time he had more struggles more pain it it in fact it got so much is so intense that he, he had to leave that particular city in the middle of a night like a fugitive he ran away he didn't have good experiences but then he says every time i think of you i thank god for you i've got bad experiences man i don't have nothing to thank god for you but then he goes on to say something else that among you there are people who stood with me from the beginning so even though i have more bad experiences i'm trying to remember the good things inside me you see the problem with us is that we always find what is negative with others we are always trying to find what is wrong with your whatever your spouse did whatever your spouse said whatever your child did whatever your child uh, said you're always trying to look at what is negative what bible is teaching us is if you want to honor people try find out something that is good inside them for us you know for some of us we might have to become sherlock holmes and take a magnifying glass and look for something good still look for something good and praise them for it in fact paul goes on further and giving a better um way of using uh, this in chapter so ephesians chapter 4 verses 29 and 30 he says this do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs that it may benefit to those who listen so what he's saying is this hey instead of using your words to pull people down use your words to encourage them how do you encourage people just not just by words but you actually encourage people by giving them another opportunity i know you failed me i know you disappointed me i know what you did is not right but i'm going to give you one more option one more opportunity to do better next time when you do that you are offering encouragement to them not to continue in sin not to continue doing wrong things but you're actually saying i'm going to give you another chance to correct yourself in the next time that will help them that will build them so prioritize them praise them i told you i, I didn't have a better word for it so i'm just using it number 3 protect them protect them you listen very carefully when you love someone you protect them love perfect love covers a multitude of i know it's in english it's a bad translation it says perfect love covers multitude of sin but this is what the author is trying to tell us hey if you have a it is probably this is exactly how it should have sounded perfect love covers all weaknesses 
not sin, but weakness. I'll give you an example. After a perfect journey with God and doing something, you know, basically saving humanity, Noah went and got drunk. He was so drunk that he, he has no idea that he lost all his clothes on his body. And he's now lying down on, his, on, on the floor, drunken, fully drunken, fully naked. One of his sons walks into that home, walks into the room, finds his father lying down naked, fully drunk. And he found that situation so funny that he wanted to make memes of it and put it on Facebook. So he runs out and calls for his brothers, finds his two brothers and says, Hey, you know, really funny thing is happening at home. Dad is fully drunk and you know, naked. Let's go and see him. Let's take some, some snaps and put it on Snapchat or whatever. The other two did not respond the way he responded. He said, they, they didn't even say a word. They walked into the house picked up a blanket and they walked towards their father. Here is the interesting thing. They walked backwards. I mean, I love that. Huh? It shows how do we respect our parents? It shows what honoring others actually means. They are men. Huh? Remember that. They are men. The guy who is naked and lying down is a man. They didn't have anything to specifically look for now. They can just walk up as they are, but they respected their father in spite of who he is at that point of time. So much that they chose not to look at their father. Not in disgust, huh? don't, think it, it, don't think it is disgust, it's respect. It's out of their respect that they chose to take this blanket and cover his nakedness. That's the point I'm trying to make to you. They are not approving his drunken state. They are not approving what he did um, they, what they are doing is, in his weakest point of his life, they are covering him. When people around you fall because of a sin that they have done, and they may ne not necessarily bad people usually, you know, Noah is not a bad person. Noah is a good man who did a bad thing. He was a good man, that's why he saved us. But he did a bad thing, I understand that, what he did is bad. But in his weakest point, he doesn't want a guy like me to come and preach to him. What he wants is a guy who covers his nakedness. Who says, hey, you know, I'm going to be with you. I know what you've done is wrong, but I'm going to help you to get through this. I'm going to help you to recover, get better now. I'm not going to go preachy on you. I'll help you. I'll correct you. I'll show you the right path. But right now, I'm not preaching to you. I'm sitting with you, man. That's what protecting means. People need friends who can protect them. Don't you think we should start that here inside the church first? Don't you think that's where it's supposed to start first? That instead of talking back about others at their backs, wouldn't it be good for you as a Christian that you show true love by walking up to them and saying, I know what you did is wrong. I know you messed up your life, but I'm going to help you through this. I'll cover you. I'll protect you. Man. I'm not going to put you to shame in front of the world. Why would you want to put another Christian to shame? When all Satan wants to do is that one single thing. By talking about others, gossiping or slandering or opening their, exposing their weaknesses to others, their sin to others, what are you trying to do? Aren't you joining Satan in his work? Wouldn't it be good for us to act like Christ that we come and cover and protect them? Hey, here, here is another thing. You protect them by praying for them. Prayer is the most powerful protective shield over people. Pray for them. Pray for them. It's almost as if you're putting up an invisible shield around them because of your prayer. I'm glad there are church members in our church who, who are willing to protect me. In, in, in my time of failures, they would walk up to me. They did walk up to me. They said, Pastor, we're going to be with you in this journey. If those people are not, if those kind of people are not there, I wouldn't be standing here. I'm, by the way, remember this, I'm never a perfect pastor. 
I'm never going to be a good guy. Sorry. Until Christ comes. I'm on this journey along with you, just like you. I have problems, I have failures, I have weaknesses, but I'm glad I have people who will come up to me and say, hey, we're going to love you enough to help you to get through this. I hope every capstone would become that. I pray that that's how you show honor to everyone, protecting them. Does it make sense? Okay, let's close with this. A little bit of wisdom. The more value I give to something, the more value I give to something, the more value I get from it. The more value I get from it. This is the piece of wisdom that I want to give you. The more value, the more I value something, the more I value from it. Make sense? Remember this. So last week you learned this. If I can understand the fear of God, I can live fearlessly. That's the wisdom, wisdom we left you with. Today, remember this. The more I add value to others, the more I value something, the more value I get back from it. The more value is given back.